Hi, N8N friends. Today uh, I'm gonna uh, make a little workshop on parallel processing in N8N. Um, and specifically, we're gonna talk about how to sp split a specific bottleneck step in your workflow into parallel uh, workflows. So just this specific uh, parallel processing. So that's something that I had to deal with recently on a project. And I hadn't found this solution that I have uh, built myself online. So I decided to make a little video and share it with the community. So let's dive in. So um, N8N uh, works um, in a sequential manner. Um, so whatever is drawn in the canvas will be processed step by step. Um, and N8N does not have um, parallel execution natively. And that can be a little bit uh, tricky to implement. Uh, so sometimes you could have uh, a step that's a bottleneck, especially with AI models that take uh, an, an AI reasoning models, they take quite a while to, uh, to answer to a query from, from the workflow. And so, um, or if you're processing, for example, media, uh, you're sending a request to a service or, or an alternative workflow, and that takes quite a while to, 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 to process, um, that step will be a bottleneck in your in your process, and um, uh, it can take a long a long time. Now, um, what you what we want to do is we want to process that step. We want to split the batches that come from step uh, step one and uh, process those batches, split them and process them in parallel. Typically, the advice that I've seen online in the community uh, is to set up a webhook. Um, that will catch a signal uh, or a request from one of the batches when they are finished that signals this is the last batch and uh, therefore we can move on to step three. Now, the problem with this is uh, called uh, uh, race conditions. So if you set it up like this and you set up a, a webhook that the last batch triggers, you need to be very careful about uh, you know, making sure that it's indeed the last batch that's uh, triggering that webhook. And sometimes you will have two processes um, that finish at relatively the same time. Um, and then they would call, for example, a check procedure. Maybe they check um, how many uh, of the batches have recorded that they are finished. And they would see, see the same information. So in this case, for example, let's assume these two uh, processes call an, on your Airtable uh, table where you record when the processes have finished. And they will see both that only process one, this process has finished uh, completing. Therefore, we should wait until all of the batches have finished. And so you would never have step three triggered that way. Um, so typically, this is a problem with Airtable. I've actually confronted it on a, on a recent project. And Airtable doesn't have that inbuilt. It's not built for multi-threaded and uh, multi uh, uh, on parallel processing. It's it's more it's more of a of a friendly database, let's say. But the system that I will show you now solves this problem and is safer than just setting up a webhook uh, and hoping that uh, there are no race conditions. And this is a uh, polling mechanism. So in the polling mechanism. Uh, we don't rely on the processes themselves triggering the next the, the, the next step. We start a process which tasks will be to check that all the batches are finished. And so long as it doesn't see that uh, all the batches are finished, it will keep looping and keep polling or requesting um, to see if all, all the batches have finished. And then uh, we can trigger the, 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 the last step when we are sure that all the batches have finished. So separating this uh, step of the process uh, gives us a little bit more uh, safety. So let's see in, uh, in a little bit more concrete terms what I mean. Uh, here I have a workflow in uh, N8N um, where I retrieve some posts from Reddit, then I filter them using a reasoning model um, and then I do extract some common patterns. We don't need to, to, to know all the details here, but um, the step two is the one that is the bottleneck uh, in my case. So um, here on step one, I can retrieve up to 1,200 posts, let's say, for, for a typical request. 
And uh, even though I'm using quite a fast uh, reasoning model served by Grok, it takes about three seconds uh, for, for that uh, part of the workflow to, to execute. So 1,200 times three seconds, that's 3,600 seconds. And then that means it's, it's, a, it's an hour, basically, to process all of those um, uh, posts. Now, I wanted to make it um, using the polling mechanism. And so let me show you how this would work in practice. So let me actually go back to... <laughs> so I have the same process that I had shown you, but instead of processing um, the uh, reasoning, um, processing the post through that filter step one at a time, I split them into three, uh, three paths. And so, and I put that processing, that relevance filter in its own um, um, workflow. The important thing to note here is you can do that and trigger three parallel runs by, uh, for example, let me show you. You have to, to, to enable that, that parallel processing, you have to uh, enable or, or disable this option, wait for sub workflow completion. So once you set that off, um, then um, N8N does not wait for the end of that specific sub workflow to continue to the next one. So then you have true parallel starting of uh, three different workflows. And so let's go and see that relevance workflow. So that's exactly the same thing that I had before. Um, and now we have basically a parallel uh, process of three uh, workflows that work together. So, and let's go back to the, the main uh, starting point. After those three uh, workflows are started, I then go and start the polling mechanism over here. And so, here we start the polling mechanism. We're going to record some, some data and then I also start a, a basically a wait mechanism. I, I do not start polling immediately because I know uh, it's going to take X minutes before it's reasonable to even check. So first um, I will wait and then the polling mechanism will start every, let's say, three or four seconds. So let me show you what I have in the, uh, in the polling data. Um, let me show you the... In Airtable, basically, I have a completions tracker. So here I have, uh, let me show you, is it? That's just a completion tracker for each batch. We have an execution ID and then a status, and then the batch ID number. And then also I track the number of batches in the execution run. Um, so that's just to track each, each batch, and its batch and its completion. And then I have the polling mechanism. Uh, table where I just record the execution ID. So that's the, the, the whole process. Um, when the polling started, then some timeout um, and an initial wait time and polling interval all in seconds. So let me, let, let me quickly explain. So the polling interval is how, how frequently will that polling mechanism I've shown, shown you uh, will ask this table, hey, or, or the completions tracker, hey, how many... Um, uh, completions have we recorded uh, th this the initial wait time is, is the one I just discussed is to, there's no point in starting um, to immediately poll you will just uh, keep uh, your, your application busy doing useless requests and timeout is basically a limit so um, uh, just to make sure that th this process does not run uh, infinitely and crashes your your application uh, I set up a, a timeout that's a reasonable uh, d deadline uh, over which something has gone wrong, and so we should just shut down the uh, the process. So let's go back to N8N. So in that that main flow where we uh, did the parallel work, we then record in the polling table, we recalled the execution ID, when we're starting this polling now, and the other t uh, items, so the timeout, initial wait time, polling interval, those will pass will pass to that waiting waiting node, so it's the same time, the same items, those will trigger that simple waiting node. And it's really simple. Um, let me show you where is it. Uh, 
wait to execute. There you go. It's really just a, a workflow that waits that initial wait time, and then it will trigger the um, the polling um, workflow with that execution ID. So then let's go to that polling workflow. Here's the polling mechanism. So um, all it does is once it's re received that request, um, it looks at the execution ID. Here I've, uh, I'm replacing our table with the no code DB, so don't, don't pay attention to that, but that's the same, it's the same lookup basically. Uh, so we look up that completion tracker, we look up that execution ID, we see, okay, this is the, uh, this is the run I'm, I'm checking, and that will show you uh, how many batches uh, have, uh, uh, have finished. So then we count the number of batches there, and then we set up basically a, a routing. Uh, so below the number, so if, if the number of batches that have been uh, finished is below that number of batches in execution run, which we recorded from the, from the start, then we're going to go uh, and do this, this polling. Otherwise, it means that we are finished. And so we can go and execute the next part uh, of our overall workflow, which will be another sub-workflow. Sub so if the, all the batches are not finished, then we go here. And then we're going to get the uh, other polling uh, parameters. Uh, so that's just the data that basically tells you uh, the timeout, for example. Um, that will um, be used here in this other routing node, which is more of an if uh, node, but I just kept a, a routing node. But basically it checks, okay, how long has it been now since the time of the polling start time? And is it less than that timeout? Um, if, if it's less, then we're gonna go here. If it's not, that's it. We're we're finished, and nothing else has been has been triggered. That's the fail safe basically. But so if the uh, if the time um, is below that, uh, if the time elapsed is below that timeout, then we go here, and uh, we're gonna wait for that polling interval, and then uh, we're gonna basically make sure we get the execution ID, and then we're gonna trigger re-trigger this workflow itself. So this here just triggers. Uh, the the polling mechanism so it triggers itself again and so we're going to go back into that uh, loop and check okay have we uh, well, how many batches have been uh, finished uh, if not if not all the batches are finished we're going to go back here and uh, that's how we basically execute uh, this mechanism critical for this to work is this time timeout uh, uh, periods so the way I do it in this in this case um, is I do it somewhere where I split the batches. I have a, I have a code node here uh, that splits all the items. These are the Reddit posts that I talked about, and basically splits them. Uh, what was it today? My clicking is not working. So it's a bit of a, of, a, of a code block, but all it does it splits the, uh, the data items into batches here, three three batches, and I set up really conservative. Time, time periods for um, the so the initial wait time and the timeout. So I calculate the minimum processing time. So that's the batch size times the seconds per request. So that's the, really the minimum. I see, I test the, the reasoning model. I see that it's three to four seconds with Grok. So I put three seconds per request. So that will put like a, a floor that will help me calculate the initial wait time. So that's the minimum processing time times 80%. So I'm saying, okay, you know, the quickest it could, it could do and take 80% of that time, only then we start polling so that we don't have these requests that keep being, being sent to the polling uh, mechanism. And then we have this timeout, which is basically the minimum processing time times three in my, in my case. So that's pre pretty wide, but uh, it's better to be conservative and not to finish a process that's maybe just uh, has slowed down because there are some, um, I don't know, um, network issues or God knows what. I mean, Grok is, uh, is an uh, um, AI inference service that's pretty um, pretty quick, but there are some AI services that uh, take a variable amount of time. And so you want to make uh, sure that this timeout is set conservatively, not to end your process prematurely. So that's uh, that was it, really. Um, this mechanism I find is, is better than uh, requiring webhooks and you, you can avoid race conditions this way. 
Um, and uh, it's one of those mechanisms that uh, coders use in more uh, advanced applications. So hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Take care.